So Jeff Keighley is getting canceled. There are a lot of people who are mad. So Jeff Keighley is the, uh, you know, he's the Games Expo guy. He's getting canceled by Twitter. And the reason why he's getting canceled is because he didn't make a tweet about how bad the game layoffs were. That's right, because he didn't like or make a tweet about the game layoffs. And instead, he made a tweet about something else for another reason. So, woke up still annoyed. This dude went to bed mad at Jeff Keighley. He woke up, he's still mad at Jeff Keighley. He's still- the Bro, like- <laughs> He went to bed with this dude in his head. Like, guys, by the way, there's some people- Why did you like the tweet that's stupid? Because- I just use it. It's like, if I like your tweet, it's kind of like, you know, that, and like you tweet something really stupid. Think that I like, I just wrote your name in my death note. Like you're going on YouTube, you're getting farmed. That's what's going to happen. If you get your tweet liked by me, you're getting farmed. That's what's going to happen. And today the crop is Mr. Kirk here. He says, God, I just noticed this is Jeff's only tweet today. Nothing about the layoffs. Bro. How could he do this? How could Jeff not tweet? How could he how could he not tweet? This is yeah, and, and yeah, this is the sanest Twitter user, right? He's waiting, yes, I know. And has Jeff made a tweet about it since then? Oh my god. He has not made a tweet about this. This is really bad. The world's gonna end. Yeah, I think this is- that's not the issue. The problem is that he never really talked about ongoing issues in the industry ever, and his VGA are simply celebrity gatherings, many of whom don't have anything to do with video games, and the actual awards are 10% of the whole event, barely engaging in the actual industry. He's tweeting about game stuff. No, I think these are industry gatekeepers that want him to follow their rules. He's not accountable to you. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's a, he's tweeting about video game shit all the time. Let, let's look and see. Uh, PlayStation 4, what's the most exciting game development studio? How would you grade Elden Ring? Uh, Rare, remember this? Remember whenever you would see this at the beginning of a game, you knew it would be a good game? There it is. Uh, Xbox, Elden Ring, Elden Ring, Elden Ring, Elden Ring, a grounded new game, Mother 3, also new video game, video game. He tweets about video games all of the fucking time. And also, yes, people are unhappy that like, oh, he brought celebrities into the game awards. I think it makes sense and it doesn't make sense. I think the Matthew McConaughey thing was kind of weird. And I think having Timothy Chalamet announce the game of the year was also kind of weird. But I didn't think Michael B. Jordan going on with Kojima was weird at all. I thought it was fucking awesome. Because, like, he's a genuine fan of games and he's just sitting there talking about games. No, no, let me see if I can show this. That was the weirdest one? You don't think so? Jordan Peele? Oh, I'm so stupid. Yes, Jordan Peele. What the fuck am I thinking? Yes, Jordan Peele doing it. Like, let me see if I can show you this. this. But, like, basically, it was him and Kojima standing up on stage talking about video games. That was literally it. It was Jordan something. I just fucking filled it in. And, uh, anyway... Uh, I thought that was fine. But overall, the other ones, it's like, yeah, it was kind of weird, but that's about it. I didn't think it was a big deal. And also, the other reason why it's full of a bunch of, an, a bunch of advertisements for games and game trailers is I'm going to be totally honest, okay? And this is the reason why these industry people don't get it. I watch the Game Awards primarily for the trailers. I want to see the new games that are coming out. I use it as like a new expo 
of like, oh, these are the new games that are going to come out. Now, do I care about like the awards? Yeah, sure, I care about the awards. But what really gets me excited is hoping that we're going to see, you know, I thought maybe we'd get Elden Ring DLC trailer at that time. Now we got Monster Hunter Wild. And I'm like, well, what's Monster Hunter? Then I played through almost the whole game. It's been great. So what is this? So yeah, it's a new Monster Hunter World game. Exactly. And so these people don't understand that if you want to run a good show, the primary goal whenever you're running a good show is to put the audience first. And these people want Jeff to put the industry first. And the industry, that's the problem with the fucking industry, is that they don't put the audience first anymore, they put themselves first. They try to self-insert characters, they come out with shitty games and make you try to feel sorry for them. What the fuck is this? And then they get mad at the audience. So Jeff is the problem. Yeah, Jeff is the problem because he's looking out for the fucking audience. Am I crazy here? This guy got so fucking mad that Jeff Keighley didn't tweet about this. He woke up the next day still mad and he wrote a fucking article about it. The games industry deserves a better spokesperson than Jeff Keighley. Let's see what the rest of this is. Uh, Game Awards, Jeff Keighley sitting down with his hands across his lap. Nacho, cheese, Doritos, and Mountain Dew on his left. <coughs> you know it, we know it, we all know it, okay? The initial controversy, people said it proved that Keighley was somehow compromised, that his integrity was in question. At the time, I felt sorry with him, with his sad, glassy eyes and pile of uneaten chips. I thought these accusations... Oh my fucking god, what the, oh my god, what are you doing? Or, yeah, do you don't want to know why he has the Mountain Dew thing next to him? Because Mountain Dew paid him. Do you want to know why he's got Doritos? For the same goddamn reason. But do you really think, like, I mean, like, do you really think Jeff Keighley hates Doritos? Does he hate Mountain Dew? No, he just took a sponsor for the event so he can pay for the fucking event. This is insane. Am I going to say... That this article is compromised because... Wait, what happened to the, the thing? Uh, because it's got an advertisement here? No. What a ridiculous thing to say. There was another advertisement at the top. I think it must have uh, it must have closed after I, I pulled it up here. But, oh, there it is. Look at checkout. Pay look at this. I I are they being compromised by Google Fiber? Are they being compromised with uh, PayPal? What an outrageous thing to even, imp like, to say that this, to give it any level of credibility. And do you want to know the best part about the entire thing is the fact that the answer is in fact absolutely yes, they are compromised. But not in the way people accuse. This guy is compromised because he is financially incentivized to create content that will generate more views rather than create content that is authentic, ethical, accurate, or good. And it's because he's been compromised by the same ads that he accuses Jeff Keighley of being compromised by. Even whenever he says, because you can see clearly what the implication of what he's saying is, right? The implication of what he's saying is that I initially thought that he wasn't compromised. Oh, we're only at the beginning of this little fucking essay here, okay? But now he is. That's clearly the implication. Guys, I think I'm starting to get compromised too. Oh my god, I'm compromising. You compromise any healthy roshi? Yeah, this is the this is the way that people this is this is very dishonest communication, in my opinion. Uh, this integrity was in question, perhaps... Okay, earlier this month, PC Gamer created a visual chart of the 16,000 layoffs across the games industry. A white space full of red dots. And, okay, so basically there's been a lot of layoffs. The tweet below is the list of all the layoffs. A lot of people have been laid off in unprecedented times. Uh, more people have been laid off. Uh, more people have been laid off. Staff skill, the labor is the project. Uh, I understand why celebrities and studio heads get the spotlight at the Game Awards. Just a minute. Here was what my point was going to be, and I'm sure he's made articles about this, but I'm not sure if I can find one right now. And so, don't quote me on this, but I, I assume 
that Kirk has written articles that are very critical of video games in the past. I bet that he has been critical of video games many times. And I want him to know that it is also his fault that these things have happened, these layoffs have happened. Because he has been part of the deluge of gamers, players, and most importantly, consumers who have not had their audience and their needs met by the producers and the developers of these games. And the result of a bad product is people that lose their jobs. That is the cause and effect that that creates. That is what happened. That's how it is. Why do these layoffs happen? They're because of you. Why have these layoffs happened? They're because of me and Kirk. Ironically, one of the only people who doesn't do that is Jeff Keighley. Isn't this, isn't this odd? And so anyway, this is a list of all this happening. And so we're going to go back and we're going to look at Jeff Keighley. This is the part now again with, uh, with Jeff Keighley. I understand why celebrities and studio heads get the spotlight at Game Awards. Keeley is desperate for the show to be seen in the same light as the Oscars. Wheeling out Keanu Reeves and putting on a musical talent builds the buzz around the show and with the people that have never licked a Nintendo Switch cartridge. Who the fuck licks a cartridge? Um, their attention probably wouldn't hold for lengthy speeches and from passionate developers, so acceptance speeches are cut short and celebrities are played up along with trailers. Uh, for upcoming games. Fortunately, you still have the Dice Awards, which is doing a brilliant job of making space for developers without telling them when to get off the stage so they can play the next advert. Uh, yeah, well, the reason why you have to do this... So... Whenever you set up a show, filmmaking and entertainment has some of the strongest unions that are out there. They have incredibly strong filmmaker unions and incredibly strong unions for people that are working on set design, working on cameras, and all of those kinds of things. So, of course, he wants to wrap the show up in a reasonable time, because if he doesn't, he could get in trouble with, with his contract with those people. They are incredibly powerful. They are incredibly, like, influential. And he could be out hundreds of thousands of dollars or potentially they could just stop doing the show because they could be legally able to just simply leave if the show goes on too long. So it's like you're only looking at it from the perspective of somebody from the industry, but you're not trying to see it from the perspective of Jeff Keighley, which is like he doesn't want to make these people work way after whenever they said that they were going to work. You have to pay extra for venue space if it goes after time. Yeah. And, and you're not, you're talking about like hundreds of thousands of dollars here of all the people that are that are being affected by this real reasons yeah there's real reasons for why people need to wrap it up and also even Jeff Keeley acknowledged this criticism and he said he wasn't going to do that again or at least he would dial it down like he could format the show better to allow for that stuff yeah yeah and and he did and he said hey you know I get it I I overcompensated this year I'm not going to do it again. So it's like this issue has already been solved. Kratos talked way too much. <laughs> he did. And to be fair, like his speech was one of the best ones last year. And the other thing you have to keep in mind is that that's probably the mo one of the most memorable things about the Game Awards that year. So yeah, oftentimes stupid things like this that happen do end up having value. Kratos is funny too. Yeah, he's great. Christopher Judge. But who does Jeff Keighley's platform serve beyond Jeff Keighley? It serves the audience, the end user, the customer, which is the purpose of making this is a this is an award show for an industry that has grown more narcissistic every single year. The game awards are for the users, they're for the fans. Of course, it's also great to highlight the industry people. I think that's awesome. 
That's amazing. But at the end of the day, the fans come first. And if the fans don't come first, you're going to come in last. And that's what happens. And we've seen a lot of games that have gone down that route, which is supposed to win the Game Awards, says the right things. With forward-thinking initiatives such as Future Class, which is supposed to lend a platform to marginalize young talent, but what's the point whenever you just ignore these people? Palestinians under attack? I don't want to fucking hear about Palestine during the Game Awards. Get the fuck out of here. It's the Game Awards, not the not the Religion Awards, not the fucking global politics. Get the fuck- I don't want to hear about this shit. Every single time. Am I the only person that, like, every single time that I hear some person go up on stage and make a reference to a current tragedy, unless it happened, like, that day, I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, we got another one. Great. Uh, it's just like it makes... It's just so exhausting, bro. It's so fucking annoying. What are we doing? Those silence or violence morons ignore them? Yeah. Oh my fucking god. It's so obnoxious. As if Keeley and other organizers actually value marginalized developers or just want diversity tokens to get good press. Why? Because they're not talking about Palestine enough? Holy fuck, man. Jesus. And this is the problem. It's like, how do you ever make a person like this happy? So, like, basically, if you don't include them, you are mar you're marginalizing them. If you do include them, you're only using them for a token. And the only way you can do it right is if you do everything they tell you. Get the fuck out of here. What a stupid thing to reference. Keeley won't do anything that could affect his profit margins unless that thing is sticking up for his best friend, Hideo Kojima. What? And and so is is this supposed to be some sort of criticism? You know, the Game Awards is a massive industry that he makes. Th th this is somehow like, yeah. Oh my god. He has friends, yeah. Why did he give a fuck about Konami? Yeah, exactly. Whom he also profits from, as Kojima often uses Keeley's platform at, to promote his games now. Yeah, because they're friends and they work together in business. That's the way these things work. Keeley has the largest microphone in this industry, but refuses to do anything that could potentially jeopardize his bottom line. Jeff Keeley is a really big voice, but the reality is that Jeff Keeley is not the largest celebrity in the gaming community. He has 1.5 million followers, and a lot of his tweets get under 10,000 likes. He doesn't, cons he doesn't create regular content. He creates a couple of shows every single year, and that's his focus. That's his goal. He's not the biggest like creator in the gaming community. There's a lot of people that have a way bigger voice than he does. Why are you putting the, the responsibility on him? That's crazy. How the fuck does he owe you something? Yeah, exactly. Did you have the same stance whenever Free Hong Kong happened with Blizzard, or were you riding the Blizzard as Chinese? for not allowing uh, pol politic statements. Um, I thought Blizzard was kind of stupid for doing that. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Sure, a tweet from Keeley probably would, uh, wouldn't stop the game industry layoffs, but it would sure shine a light on the sorry state that the industry is in, rather than pretending games are better than ever. He could be reposting job openings or signal boosting developers as the most influential person in the industry he could do something. What an outrageously entitled thing to say. That you think that you have the moral authority to tell somebody else what they need to tweet about. That you think that you have the authority and like the moral uh, fucking high ground to tell somebody that you should be able to co-op their platform and dictate to them what they're allowed to talk about and what they're not allowed to not talk about. What an outrageous thing to think. What a freakish thing. A control freak? Absolutely. Instead, he's hawking AI-powered air freshener that makes your room smell like napalm and racing. And do you want to know why? Because people are more interested in that, and they th that's what's for the fans. The average users don't care about game 
like the the average gamer doesn't care how many people work at EA. They don't care about how many people work at Twitch. They don't care about how many people work at like uh, any of these studios. They just want to play the game. That's it. It's okay to be critical of someone not making a statement. You don't have the right to imply that they're bad for not doing so and tell them that they have to is insane. Yeah, sure. Still, the only that's the only thing he tweeted about yesterday. Not a single acknowledgement of the industry, you know, being on fire. I asked GameSent AI if Keeley's tweet was a sponsored post, and apparently it wasn't. So why is he doing this? He's doing it because it's weird and bizarre stuff that has a chance of going viral. He's doing it to grow his already large social media presence. He's doing it for Jeff. And I wonder who gets the ad revenue for this article. I just... Maybe Jeff will get the ad. Maybe maybe he should send the ad revenue to Jeff. Maybe he should sponsor a tweet from Jeff talking about the games industry layoffs. That's the solution. Yeah, put your money where your mouth is. Even if we take this argument at its strongest, what's wrong with doing what earns you money? Nothing is wrong with it, but what I'm saying is that everybody is going to act in self-interest. That's normal. Of course he's going to Of course his social media presence exists to benefit him. What the fuck are you talking about? We all know this is a yellow page hit piece, just like every other one of these websites. Yes. This isn't exclusive to just the games industry. The entire software industry has had massive layoffs. True. Like Twitch, Meta. Um, there's one more I don't remember. Amazon. I'm pretty sure this news came from Game Inform and Abyss, uh, linked above. I don't, Keely doesn't normally leak out to publications anymore. He'll just tweet things with the same official Game Awards account and pretend it just appeared fully formed. As a former journalist, you'd think he at least support games media. I see. So he's not happy that he's not retweeting your articles. Okay. Yeah, this is becoming more evident. Okay. Um, I've spoken to Keely both in person and over email, and he seems like a decent guy. I can see that. I just don't understand why he doesn't want to do more to help the developers that his show is created to celebrate. Happy developers make better games, and people who have redundancy live, re redundancy trauma live in a purgatorial state, in survival mode, worrying about when the next hammer will fall instead of how to pour their souls into their art. You know what's funny about this is he's actually right about this. This is a Kirk W. He's totally right. And I actually think that the amount of layoffs that are happening do create a chilling effect for people that are trying to take risks in gaming. I do think so. But I don't think it's Jeff's responsibility to call it out. I don't think Jeff tweeting about it is going to have Sony say, ah, you know what, yeah, I guess we'll cancel the firings. Come on. Even if lip service and a show is all he cares about the end product, much like the unsourced news in his tweets, these products don't just appear from other people. People work their fingers and bone to keep them entertained. Don't we owe them a sliver of empathy? Are you trying to imply that Jeff Keighley doesn't feel empathy for people that have lost their jobs? What an outrageous and psychotic thing to imply. That is incredible. That he has no empathy for the people that have lost their jobs. Why do you think that? Other than the fact that he didn't t make a tweet about it. Incredible, isn't it? Even writing this piece is a risk for me. Yeah, because it's stupid. Th th that's the reason. Because it's it's dumb. Like it's it's not a risk. You're you're not risking your career because you're criticizing Jeff Keighley. Everybody criticized him about the wrap it up stuff. Everybody criticized him about having Timothy Chalamet there. And nobody had any trouble. What is this? Tweeting and also like this yes, tweeting doesn't equal caring. Oh my god. If I'm is this like Beetlejuice? I make five tweets about Palestine and the bombing stops? I don't fucking think so. 
What the fuck are people thinking? Jesus Christ, this is embarrassing. Tweet harder, yes. God. All big developers are there. All the preview opportunities, all the things I need as a journalist to do my job. I'm criticizing Keeley. I'm potentially jeopardizing my chances of ever being invited again. So, Jeff, I ask you as someone else who loves this industry, can you put your neck on the line in the same way that burning your nostrils it isn't the gamer scent? Wake up and smell the napalm. Yeah, I'm sure that's uh, that that's that's a very cute way to end it. I'm sure this is very, you know, you feel very uh, literally satisfied, uh, you know, ending ending it with something like this. Uh, what a bunch of bullshit, man! What an absolute bunch of fucking bullshit! What a joke! I think that Jeff should invite him next year. Absolutely, he's a journalist. He deserves to be invited, even if he's making a comment like this in bad faith. I also think that he indicated that the real reason why he has resentment for Jeff Keeley because of his position as a journalist is actually because of Jeff Keeley disseminating information from articles without properly sourcing them in a way that Kirk feels is accurate. I think that that's the real reason why he's upset about this, and this is just the icing on the cupcake. That's my perspective here. What do you guys think? We shouldn't expect Jeff to do anything, but I follow a lot of game developers, and most of them tweet about the layoffs regularly. It almost looks weird if someone doesn't. Not terrible, but odd. That's because Jeff Keighley isn't in the industry of gaming. He's in the he's in the show business industry. You understand? He's not he's not in the gaming industry. He does shows. He makes shows. Are his shows about gaming? Yeah, they are, but they're mainly shows. He's a show host. Yes. Stream of consciousness, tweet post. He didn't state where he was coming from in cleaner terms. I think that he explained where his perspective was. He definitely did. I just disagree with it. I think the concept that Jeff Keeley needs to go out and explain and like take on every cause that this guy thinks is, is important is outrageous. And I think that it's also entitlement. It's massive entitlement. It's an activist piece. There's nothing particularly wrong with lobbying somebody to say something about an issue that you care about. It's certainly weird journalism, though. You can always ask people to talk about it, but the problem is in whenever you... Uh, let me... I have to, oh, fuck. I have to make sure I'm, I'm still AFK farming items in this video game so I continue being rewarded for doing nothing. Uh, people said that this guy drops some of the war elemental things, so I'm going to try and do this one. Um, okay. Yeah, the entitlement's the bad part. Yeah, he didn't ask. He just attacked the dude's character. Yes. And so, like, this is the problem. Is that, like, if he asked Jeff Keighley to do that, I would have no problem with that. But at the beginning, he looks at Jeff Keighley and he implies with this paragraph that Jeff Keighley has been compromised by capitalism or by greed. And he says, initially, perhaps the situation was forced. And at the time, I felt sorry for him. At the time, I felt sorry for him. Now, is this an exclusionary statement? Well, no. It's like, for example, uh, this is a picture of me whenever I was younger. All pictures of me are from when I was younger, right? It's obvious that the, the um, Mitch Hedberg quote. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I used to do drugs. I still do drugs. To, I still do drugs now, but I also used to do them. Yeah, yeah, of course. Right. So I understand this is not an exclusionary statement, but this very clearly implies the fact that especially whenever you go on to further attack a person's character and their integrity, that the implication is that this uh, this accusation was actually, in fact, true. Are you seeing like my logic with the with with the way these words are, and how these words are crafted in a way to make people think something without saying it? And, and then you know he's just going down, like attacking his credibility. I don't. I understand why celebrities get he's putting on a show, etc. Uh, again, I think that articles like this are exactly why the gaming industry is having problems. Is because the gaming industry forgot who it serves. The gaming industry thought that it serves the themselves. It serves each other. It doesn't. It exists to serve the audience and to serve the fans. And the fact that people can't understand that is the exact reason why games and like these big AAA developers are losing touch with their communities. It's because they're making games to serve shareholders. They're making games to serve, um, you know, like a diversity quota. They're making games and they're like trying to avoid saying male and female in the video games. 
This is not being done to serve users. This is being done to serve agendas. It's insane. And as soon as these people realize this, and actually, you know what? They don't need to realize it. Because you know what's going to happen? The market corrects. And that is one of the most beautiful and amazing things about free markets. Is that Pow World put the Suicide Squad in the fucking dirt. And that's the truth. It's because nobody actually gives a fuck about this stuff. And the free market will speak. And the people who listen will succeed. And the people who don't will fade away. Give it 10 years or so. Yeah, like, I, I just, I love how this person thinks that they have, they have the moral authority to tell somebody that they need to talk about layoffs and calling for the awards to make a public statement. Look at, read this fucking stupid shit. Made up of young developers billed as the future of the gaming industry. Members signed an open letter calling for the awards to make a public statement in solidarity with Palestinians under attack in Gaza. No such statement happened. Yeah, and it shouldn't have happened. It should have never happened. Yeah, good. And this comes as somebody who is, I, I'm massively supporting this. Like, I do. I, 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 I think Palestine's kind of getting fucked more than Israel is. I do. I, I'm going to give my honest take. I, and this is an uneducated take. I don't know what I'm talking about, right? I'm not a, I'm not a politician. I'm not a foreign uh, policy expert. But from my perspective, I think Palestine's really getting fucked, man. I think they're getting completely fucked. And I, yeah, I know, yeah, they got bad actors. And, and you know, yeah, yeah, I shouldn't have done that thing on, on October 7th. Yeah, yeah, 100%. But they are getting fucked. And there's a lot of innocent people that are getting fucked there all the time. And apparently it's been going on for decades. So, yeah. Yeah, I get it. I understand. But this is the Game Awards, not the Foreign Policy Awards. It's got nothing to fucking do with it. Why even bring politics? And this is the thing, is these people think that their moral issues are so important that they have the authority to dictate to other people what they need to talk about. It is the pinnacle of narcissism and entitlement. That's it. It's the arrogance. It is. Why piss off half the people? Yeah. And also the truth is that, yes, um, like, for example, like the Ukraine and Russia thing. I think the Ukraine and Russia thing, at least here in America, is much less divisive. Like, I think more people here in the U.S. support Ukraine, like, universally versus, like, Israel and Palestine. I think Israel and Palestine is much closer to 50-50. Not really that it's 50-50, but that it's divided. So why would you take such a dr such a dramatic stance on something where like a massive percentage of the population doesn't agree with this at all? Why would you intentionally alienate millions of people just to make a statement for something like this? And again, if he wants to make a statement like this, I totally support him. 100%. And if you want to make a statement for Israel, I would feel the exact same way because it's his right. So yes, these people are absolute fucking cancer. They are. And I'm glad that people are finally, finally waking up and realizing how ridiculous this is. Uh, I'll read some of the, uh, the posts about his, uh, his, uh, his thing about this. And then I'll look at the rest of this. Fucking right. Bell, you agrees. I disagree. The most annoying part about this is there was a time he was at least paying lip service to the idea of honoring human beings responsible for the lifeblood of gaming. There was a time where he was at least, uh, like, bro, get the fuck out of here. Like, there was a time where he was at least uh, paying lip service to the idea of honoring human beings responsible for the lifeblood of gaming. And then inside of the article, it's him paying lip service to one of the human beings that's responsible for the lifeblood of video games. But somehow that wasn't enough. Jesus Christ. Feels like you have to be at a certain level of importance to matter. Yeah. That's the way the world works. Your entire article was written because of his importance. There is absolutely... What the... F Sometimes I gotta write what's pissing me off. And also, by the way, I want to say that I always say this with articles. I think this guy's a fucking asshole and he's full of shit. 
but I totally respect and support his right to be a fucking asshole that's full of shit. Okay? 100%. I don't want to see him not write articles like this. If he feels like this article is speaking the truth that he believes, I want to read it. I want to see it. Can I ask you a question regarding the war? Why would you? I'm not educated in the topic. I gave my uneducated opinion that I'm not fully aware of. I just gave my room temperature uh, opinion. And that's why I don't talk about it a lot. That's why I don't argue about it a lot. And I'm not going, if you think that I'm wrong about this, I will fully accept that. That's totally fine. I'm not going to fight with you because I don't have enough educated information about it to really state that. I'm just giving my perspective. That's all. So no, you don't want, I don't want to, I don't want you to ask me a question about it. Because I'm, I know that I'm not educated enough to give you an answer that I think is, co is, is comprehensive. Now, I guarantee you that there are people that know less about me than this topic, and they think that they are educated enough and they understand enough about it. And that's a problem, but at least I realize it. Well, Jeff Keeley got... This is the first time that somebody has gotten canceled for not making a tweet. Yeah, it's the first time, guys.